special guest today, Lord Kerry of Clifton, former Archbishop of Canterbury. You've been involved in a new campaign, the Not A Shame campaign, which Andrea Williams made public. Well, I'm very happy to be associated with it, Howard, because I think there's a lie going around Europe, in Britain particularly, and that lie is that Christians are now such a minority group of people that um, it doesn't really matter what they do with us. But when in the last census, 72% said, the people said they were Christian. I mean, it shows there's a tremendous uh, number of people, seven out of 10 people say they claim the identity of being a Christian. And when you think of the huge work that the church is doing, all the churches in Great Britain, it is a lie. And the campaign to somehow marginalize the Christian faith is something that we must fight against. And I hope everybody will get behind the campaign. I will certainly be supporting it because I think we've got to send a message out there that Christians, um, we are there on the ground. In fact, if we left, if we just walked away, um, a huge amount of work would not be done because Christians are getting on with it in schools, in education, in uh, medicine, in the armed forces, wherever they are. Mm. Well, Christianity seems to me to be a little bit passive and, and doesn't want to shout. Uh, it, it's almost like a gentleman's type of religion, if you... Well, that's absolutely right, really. I mean, I've often said in speeches, if you act like a doormat, don't be, you know, surprised if people treat you like one. I think we have been treated um, like that because we're far too nice for our own good. I think we've got to do much more campaigning. We've got to get out there. I don't mean using violence. That's totally against all I stand for. But we've really got to be more vigorous and expect our politicians to, um, who claim to be Christian, to nail their colours to the mast as well. Absolutely. And I think this is, the, this is why I'm excited about what I heard Andrea speaking about on Revelation the other day, was that she is rallying or getting Christians to come out of the closet a little bit with their faith and not to be ashamed of it, as the campaign says. Because when you think of what the scriptures say, uh, that uh, Jesus said, that if you deny me before men, I will also deny you before my Father. So there is a, a scriptural reference here that we can say, well, come on, this is time to combat, come out against those well, laws absolutely. that have been changed. I mean, to be a disciple of Jesus Christ is to be a public Christian. You've got to be known for it, and it's no good being a Sunday-only Christian. I mean, the faith takes you out into the world, doesn't it? What you do on a Monday, it's got to express in the way we act that we are Christians, and we, to not quote another passage from 1 Peter, about giving um, expression to the hope that's within you to proclaim your faith whatever way you can. And I think probably that Andrea's campaign is aimed at that. She's a remarkable lady. And um, as I said, I'm very pleased to support it. Mm. Now, actually, that's an interesting scripture because I've used that lately. You know, we need to profess our faith to people who demand the reason for the hope within us. But when you see there is such an attack on the account of creation, for example, and fundamental Christian uh, laws and principles, even though times have moved on from the Old Testament, there are still reiterated some of these principles that w by which we must live. For example, lifestyles, that uh, homosexuality, uh, even marriage is deemed to be not important anymore. It seems to be that way. So the laws that have changed in our country um, have undermined us and therefore I think we feel as Christians that we're being overrun and overruled and therefore we may as well stay quiet especially when you see some of the um, legislation that's now been taken people have been Christians have been taken to court with guest house for example Christian guest house guest house the Bishop of Chester was um, questioned by the police about statements Churches would have been given warnings about loud noises. Um, uh, Shirley Chaplin wearing the cross um, as a nurse who'd been wearing it for nearly 30 years. Nadia as a BA um, official. Um, the man who was a marriage guidance counsellor and because he refused to counsel the same-sex uh, 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 couple, lost his licence and his job. So these things are going on. And I think we've got to express our, 
I worry about that because if we claim to be living in a country which is free, which can live with dif differences and diversity, this is a case, like these are cases in point where certain people are finding our remarks intolerable. And as I say, we are the majority. So I think it's important really to rally people and to say, enough's enough. We really are Christian and we want the right to be respected. We want to be able to express our views and we also want people who take an alternative position to still re retain their jobs and to live and work with honour and dignity. But you can understand if Christians see these things that are affecting people's livelihood would actually go back into their shell as it were. Well, that's a worry, of course, because the silencing of Christians are a result of that. Because I think there are some people, you know, not, we, we must get this right, we mustn't have a, a persecution complex about this. Because not everyone who takes an alternative point of view are wanting to cross the Christian voice. But there are a few who do. They want to make Christianity a private religion um, instead of being a public faith. And I think we, that's what we've got to resist. And if there are some Christians who are brave and bold enough to nail their colours to the mast, like um, that, um, the nurse in Exeter, we've actually got to support them. And people in our parishes and all our churches to get out there and express you know, our, our views. There's a lot given t on television time, as it were, in the media, to the opposite views of Christianity. And in fact, there seems to me that there's more uh, given to the Islamic faith, uh, and it seems like they won't. They're the authorities are scared to uh, upset them. Whereas with Christians, they defame them, and this is quite open. If you listen to a radio debate program or whatever, as, as you will know, I have a lot of time for Muslims. I, I know many of the Muslim and Jewish leaders, indeed, and I think we want to work and, and to create a country which is tolerant of faiths where people can express their beliefs, and I believe that's true of Islam in Britain, although I've often said to Muslims that the kind of um, reaction and openness we give them in our society, there should be a reciprocal arrangement in exactly. Egypt and elsewhere. We, don't, we know that that is not happening. Having said that, I think Muslims are more likely to take to the streets, more likely to raise their voices, more likely to protest. And I think we've got to take a leaf out of their book and um, in the same way say, I've got nothing to apologize for. I'm a practicing Christian. I love the Lord. I want to follow his example. And I will make my point and my views and my voice heard. Mm. Well. There is a good example by the Muslims when there's something like, for example, a film that would come out that would blaspheme God, uh, they would be the first to, to protest and, and to do it peacefully. Yeah. Um, but we seem to, as Christians, like, again, we're just so passive and don't want to upset anybody. To put, I suppose the, the Jesus said, you know, to turn the other cheek, but he didn't mean to turn the other cheek and, and not enter into politics and uh, political arguments and also to defend the gospel especially as the laws that change in our country uh, are adverse to God's laws and principles. Yeah, I have to say as a member of the House of Lords that um, Christians are pretty vigorous in protesting when we do have measures that go against what we believe is to be the gospel. So, I mean, there is a, a, a pretty good resistance that goes on there. Lower down, it seemed to me, when it comes to ordinary people in our pews and in our churches, that's where we've really got to act, help them to see that they have a role to play in all this. What I think we need to do, though, as Christians, we must be noted for what we stand for. How do we do not that? Not only by what we stand against. And what we stand for is to raise the profile on the many good things that we're doing. Now, a, lot, a lot of people who may be followers of Richard Dor Dawkins are probably saying, well, the only thing that Christians stand for are the things that we are against. And we've got to actually show mm -hmm. them that Christians are involved in society in many remarkable ways. That's the positive picture, but it's often the picture people don't realize because the picture that's coming across is the negative one that we are against certain things, like 
homosexuality. In fact, we're not against homosexuality, we're against the practice. The Not Ashamed of the Gospel campaign. Yeah. Uh, th they're going to be distributing T-shirts. In fact, when Andrea Williams was on the channel the other day, I did request they bring them out. My wife's going to bring them out tonight. Uh, really nice T-shirts and the little badges. And to encourage people to get behind this campaign and, and maybe even to write to their uh, MPs uh, and, and try and get it at a higher level because I think if leadership comes from those that are well respected in office, it's going to help the, the lay person uh, to get on board because we have a, a, a wonderful opportunity to really sort of get back to the basics of scripture and the Christian way of life as being beneficial to our nation. I, I quite agree with that and it wouldn't, would not be impossible to get a million signatures. I mean, the, 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 that's certainly more than that Christians in our land, and I would encourage them to sign up, get the T-shirt. Whether you're going to get me wearing one is another matter. <laughs> I should have brought it. Um, but um, I'm all for T-shirts as long as they're not too naff. Yeah, well, this, um, one, this one isn't. I've and seen I think it. it's really important, really, to emphasise and uh, what the, the objective would be to put on the map that Christians are not going to be doormats that we believe with passion that Christianity makes such a difference to our world and that Her Majesty the Queen is a practicing Christian. We want to identify with her commitment to the gospel, um, but above all to the fact that Christianity has been strong in our land since uh, long before the time of Augustine, who came in 597, right the way back to the second century, long before there was one monarchy and Christianity is not going to disappear ever, but we're standing firm for the sake of Jesus Christ. Lord Kerry, I want to thank you. Can I shake your hand, sir, uh, for being with us? Great. Thank you very much indeed.